After the end of World War II, the world was split into two, East and West. This marked the beginning of an era called the Cold War. Flying over Pakistan, altitude 30,000 feet, current date, August 24th, 1964, current time, 0500 hours, approaching Soviet airspace, 20 minutes to drop off, commencing internal depressurization, equipment, check, arm main parachute. Alright, you ready to go? Drop zone still showing high pressure mass, Cav okay. Good. We've got high visibility. Put out that cigar. Connecting oxygen hose to interior connector. Put on your mask. Hmm. Approaching release point. Ten minutes to drop off. Hey, are you deaf? Put out your cigar and put on your mask. Depressurizing complete. Checking oxygen supply. Six minutes to drop off. Opening rear hatch. Sunrise. External temperature minus 46 degrees Celsius. Two minutes to drop off. Stand up. You'll be falling at 130 miles per hour. Try not to get frostbite from the windshield. 20 seconds to drop off. Standing by. Status all green. Prepare for drop off. Counting down. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Spread your wings and fly. God be with you. Jack, I have some important news. The head of the CIA has finally given us the green light for the virtuous mission. Virtual mission? No, the virtuous mission. The future of our Fox unit depends on it. If it succeeds, we'll be officially organized into a unit. Virtuous mission? That sounds like some kind of initiation ritual. Don't get cocky. This isn't a training op. Right. So what exactly is this wonderful mission? Well, about two years ago, a certain Soviet scientist requested asylum in the West through one of our moles. His name is Nikolai Stepanovich Sokolov. He's head of the OKB-754 Design Bureau, one of the Soviet's top secret weapons research facilities and the East's foremost expert on weapons development. Sokolov? Isn't he that famous rocket scientist? The very same. On April 12, 1961, the Soviets achieved the first manned spaceflight in history. The Earth was blue, but there was no God. Well spoken. The rocket that carried Yuri Gagarin into orbit was the A-1, known as the Vostok rocket. Sokolov is said to be the one that's most responsible behind the Mozi engine cluster that was used in that rocket. After Gagarin's flight, Sokolov left the rocket development to become head of the newly established design bureau. From a lowly technician to a head of a design bureau? Now that's quite a success story. So why did he want to defect? It seems he'd become afraid of his own creations. Afraid? Call it a crisis of conscience. And for that, he left his country and his family behind and went over the fence? Not exactly. One of his demands was that his family was also taken safely to the west. We used a mole to get the family out first and succeeded in sneaking Sokolov out of the Berlin Wall shortly afterwards. I was the one who conducted the operation. The security on the eastern side was still full of holes back then. So then what? We got Sokolov over in one piece, but the whole ordeal let him exhausted and we checked him into a hospital in West Berlin. It took him two weeks and over 600 miles to get him from the research facility in the Soviet Union to Berlin, so he was in no condition to say anything coherent. And it was only a week later that we would have something much bigger on our hands. Yeah, the Cuban Missile Crisis. 
October 16, 1962, President Kennedy received word that the Soviets were in the process of deploying intermediate range ballistic missiles in Cuba. The President demanded that the Soviets dismantle and remove these missiles. At the time, he announced the naval blockade to prevent further missile shipments from reaching Cuba. But the Soviets didn't back down, instead placing their armed forces on secondary alert. Soviet transport ships carrying missiles continued on their course towards Cuba, and the Soviet forces went on alert for an all-out nuclear war. Frantic negotiations were conducted through the UN's emergency security councils and unofficial channels to end the hair trigger standoff. And finally, on October 28th, the Soviet Union agreed to remove its missiles from Cuba, and so the world avoided a nuclear holocaust. But in order to get the Soviets to pull their missiles out, we had to make a deal. Yeah. You mean the one where the U.S. agreed to remove its IRBMs from Turkey? No. The Jupiter IRBMs deployed in Turkey were obsolete and we were going to get rid of them anyway. They had no strategic value whatsoever to either the U.S. or the Russians. A Turkey deal was a ruse. A cover story that was fed to the other intelligence agencies around the world. So what did the Russians really want? They wanted us to return Sokolov. You mean the Soviets pulled out of Cuba just to get their hands on Sokolov? That's right. What the hell was he working on? At the time, we had no idea. We were running out of time. It was either give up Sokolov, or risk a full-scale nuclear war. In the end, we had no choice. President Kennedy gave in to Khrushchev's demand. The next day, I got Sokolov out of the hospital and handed him over to the agents on the eastern side. Sokolov kept screaming, save me, until he disappeared from my sight. Then, about a month ago, we received some new information from one of our moles. About Sokolov? Yes. He was taken back to the research facility and forced to continue working on the weapon in question under KGB supervision. What's more, it's on the verge of completion. So, what kind of weapon is it? Something to do with space rockets? No. Missiles. Same technology. I guess you're right. We don't know the details, but it appears to be some kind of new nuclear device. For a year now, the Soviets have been conducting frequent nuclear tests as symbiotic. Something to do with the weapon, I assume. We're talking about a secret weapon so big that Khrushchev was ready to pull out of Cuba to get it back. Is Sokolov still in the facility? According to our intelligence, he's in Selinoyarsk, a place in the mountains about three miles to the west known as the Virgin Cliffs. The Virgin Cliffs, huh? A nice name for a virtuous mission. They moved him there just recently. Why? Apparently, they're conducting a field test of the weapon. But it's our best chance to get him back. The mission would never have been possible if he were still at the research facility. This is our last chance. Sokolov must have known that too when he contacted us. Listen up, Jack. Our mission is to infiltrate Selinoyarsk in the Soviet mountains, ensure the safety of Sokolov, and bring him to the west. If we don't get Sokolov back before the weapon is complete, we'll be facing a major crisis. The clock is ticking. Once we've confirmed the rescue of Sokolov, then fly at the recovery point. A recovery balloon will be dropped at that point. Helium will be pumped into the balloon to inflate it. The process takes about 20 minutes. Once it's complete, the gunship arm will latch onto the balloon and pull it up. The full-ton surface-to-air recovery system. I'm familiar with the theory. Take it easy. It's been combat proven. Do you think Sokolov's up to it? The shock will be less than during a parachute jump and the arm can handle up to 500 pounds. She's equipped with two 6-barrel 20mm Vulcan cannons, as well as two 40mm machine guns. Sounds like she could hold her own against a battalion of tanks. Even with the fuel in the reserve tank, we're facing a 4-hour time limit. If it all goes well, it shouldn't take more than a few hours. Home in time for dinner. But if anything goes wrong, you'll be eating dinner, breakfast, and all the rest of your meals in the jungle. Mm-hmm. <laughs>